Good morning friends, we are working towards building longitudinal perturbed equations of motion okay. and in that we have seen that we only consider motion along x or f x minus m g theta cos theta 1 equal to m u dot was one equation and there was f z minus m g theta sin theta 1 is equal to m w dot minus q u 1 and m is equal to i y y q dot. Sometime I may be using f a x as long as they are cap they are small letters f x f z and small m we all understand these are perturbed aerodynamic force along x direction body x direction f z along body z direction and m is about body y axis, but we are also clear that we are using stability axis system right as the body fixed axis system which is designed in such a way the orientation of x is towards the velocity vector in the vertical plane right. We are talking about only longitudinal perturbed equations of motion. perturbed equations of motion. Why we are doing all this thing, why are taking so much of pain? Because we know that this u, which is u dot here, q, then w, which is w dot here, q dot here, these are all perturbed quantities. So, we will be tracking those perturbed quantities to comment on whether the aircraft is dynamically stable or not right that is our purpose to solve these equations I need to know what is the dependence of perturbed aerodynamic forces f x f z and moment on motion variables their rates or control variables. So, for that what we did we started writing f x the function of uh, without f x we have assumed that is function of let us say u by u 1 alpha and delta e that means, we have neglected the contribution of alpha dot and q on f x right. So, what is the message here is we have neglected the contribution of alpha dot and q on perturbed aerodynamic force f x right. This should be very very clear. Now, from there what we did we say we can now we can write it like this d alpha into alpha plus d f x a by d delta e into delta e. Also, my apology sometime I may be using f a x instead of f x a. So, both are same thing. So, you have to be patient with me on sometime I will be using notations which I often forget. Okay. But as long as you understand what is the meaning of d f x a by d u by u 1 this is the partial derivative the how much the force along x is changing per unit change in u by u 1 similarly for alpha and delta i. And we have also found out d f x a by d u by u 1 and the expression was minus q 1 s 2 c d 1 plus c d u. Similarly, and of course, at steady state 
because that is steady state, I am using the term 1 here. Right? And what is the steady state for our case? It is the cruise. Right? Similarly, d f x a by d alpha, we found it to be q 1 s minus c d alpha plus c l 1. Similarly, d f x a by d delta e was found to be minus q 1 s c d delta e. C d alpha you know what is when I say C d that is a drag puller I represent C d naught plus K C L square. So, I can easily find out d C d by d alpha for a small angle, but we will assume that C d naught does not depend upon alpha and I can take a derivative and we have shown what will be the approximate expression for C d alpha and also you know what is C L 1, C L 1 is the C L to maintain cruise level cruise at a given altitude and given altitude and given speed at steady state is the q 1 that is q 1 is at cruise what is the dynamic pressure dynamic pressure once I know this it is so straightforward for us what I have to do we will take the first equation f x and see how we can further simplify it in a manner where we can use it, use our normal understanding of Laplace transform etcetera and etcetera. So, if I substitute these things there, then I can write, let me complete this, I can write for f x, if I have to write d f x a by d u by u 1 into u by u 1 plus d f x a by d alpha into alpha plus d f x a by d delta e into delta e that is for f x then I write minus m g theta cos theta 1. What was theta 1? Theta 1 is the attitude of the airplane at cruise. Okay. It is not the flight path angle. Okay. Please understand. So, this is equal to m u dot. Right. And now, if I substitute the expression of d f x a by d u by u 1 and d f x a by d alpha and d f x a by d delta e, whatever expression I have given you, then I can straightforward write u dot equal to minus g theta cos theta 1 plus x u into u plus x alpha into alpha plus x delta e into delta e. Please be reminded that we have assumed that uh, no thrust modeling, okay, which can be easily done the ma manner which we are doing for drag. Okay. And what is what will be the expression of x u? x u will be you can yourself do it once you substitute those expression and once I write it you will understand that x u is nothing but minus q 1 s c d u plus 2 c d 1 divided by m u 1. You could see that we substitute for d f x a by d u 1, this q minus q 1 is by c d u plus 2 c d 1 and then when I write u dot, so that l u 1 is absorbed here. So, simply you can find out this. Once you know x u, you also know similarly x alpha will be equal to minus q 1 s c d alpha minus c l 1 divided by m u 1 and x delta e will be equal to minus q 1 s c d delta e by m it is all.
okay what is cd delta e don't get lost into this expression these are mechanical okay and it doesn't require rocket science to derive these expressions i have explained enough but you should not lose the insight what is cd delta e cd delta e is, see this is the airplane tail let's say okay and this is the elevator if i am flying a machine i'll always prefer to suppose this is my cl design so i'll always prefer a configuration of wing their location tail location the tail moment arm all in such a way that cm versus cl should follow trend such that here dcm by dcl is negative restricted by the amount of static margin you are going to design that you already know also i will prefer the airplane should automatically get this configuration at delta e equal to 0 that is for example your main mission is to cruise then i should be able to get a trim cl design where i need not put any delta e why because the moment i put delta e this cd delta e tells me that there will be increase in drag increase in drag because you are trimming it right so a good designer will ensure that this trim drag this cd delta which which attributes a trim drag should be carefully handled best way to do it is that for the most of the operation which you want to fly the airplane make sure it is trimmable with delta e equal to 0 or very very low right so that is why cd delta e is also an important parameter and then another important thing you should understand the cd delta e or cd and cl then you will find cl alpha you will find cm alpha will be coming etc these are non dimensional derivatives they don't have any dimension but if you see all this x u x alpha x delta e they all have dimensions for example the dimension of x u you will find it is second inverse dimension of x alpha you will find fit second but two forgive me i am using fit here similarly x delta e you will find it is having a dimension so this x u x alpha x delta e they are termed as dimensional dimensional stability derivatives you will soon realize this dimensional derivatives x u x alpha x delta e similar like m u m alpha m delta e z u z alpha z delta e all will play important role in deciding the dynamic stability of the airplane so these are termed as dimensional stability derivatives okay so this is the example of how to simplify the equation in a convenient form for our further analysis i have demonstrated it for first equation fx which is u dot equal to this 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 plus x delta e into delta e similarly or similar exercise i will do for fz then i can show that once i try to pick fz minus mg theta cos theta 1 oh no this is not cos g theta sin theta 1 is equal to m w dot minus q u 1 if i pick the second equation and i know again fz will be function of u by u 1 alpha will be alpha dot q c by 2 u 1 and delta e then i can write fz as df z a by du by u 1 into u by u 1 
plus d f z a by d alpha into alpha plus d f z a by d alpha alpha dot we will non dimensionalize this. So, you say d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 into alpha dot c by 2 u 1 plus d f z a d q c by 2 u 1 into q c by 2 u 1 plus d f z a plus d delta e into delta e. Okay. So, what is the next step? We have already learnt when we handle the fx equation, we have to substitute the expression derived for this, this, this and this at steady state. Already those expressions we have identified and derived, we substitute those here and then put it here and complete this equation and once you do that, you will get w dot minus u 1 q is equal to minus g theta sin theta 1 plus z u into u plus z alpha into alpha plus z alpha dot into alpha dot plus z q into q plus z delta e into delta e. Okay. And what will be the expression for z u minus q 1 s c l u plus 2 c l 1 divided by m u 1 then z alpha will be equal to minus q 1 s c l alpha plus c d 1 divided by m u 1 z alpha dot will be given as minus q 1 s c l alpha dot c bar by 2 m u 1 and z q will be equal to minus q 1 s c l q c bar by 2 m u 1. Please understand that we have already derived the expression for c l alpha dot c l q so, these things are just algebraic manipulation. What we have done? We have expanded f z, substituted those expressions, then divided by m u 1 and we got this equation. This is what we are looking for. So, this is my second equation and also please understand that as x u x alpha x delta e is z u z alpha z alpha dot z q z delta e they are all dimensional stability derivatives. Okay? You can check their dimension they have a finite dimension. Similarly, for m if I come for m we will get equation of the form for m we will write you know that m equal to i y y q dot. So, I can write q dot equal to m divided by i y y and again for m I will write d m by d u by u 1 into u by u 1 plus d m by d alpha into alpha plus d m by d alpha dot c by 2 u 1 into alpha dot c by 2 u 1 plus d m by d q c by 2 u 1 into q c by 2 u 1 plus d m by d delta e into delta e. Of course, by now you are expert that these derivatives partial derivatives to be evaluated at steady state and we have all done this. We know this expression. 
and if I again substitute it here for m, for m I put this I divide by i by y. So, I will get the equation of the form q dot equal to m u into u plus m alpha into alpha plus m alpha dot into alpha dot plus m q into q plus m delta e into delta e. And you could check yourself the expression for m u will be if I write it here expression of m u would be given as q 1 s c bar c m u plus 2 c m 1 by i y y u 1 then m alpha would be equal to q 1 s c bar c m alpha by i y y then comes what m alpha dot m alpha dot would be equal to q 1 s c square c m alpha dot by 2 i y y u 1 m q will be given as q 1 s c square c m q by 2 i y y u 1 and then m delta e will be equal to q 1 s c bar c m delta e by i y y. Okay. Now, let us see here try to understand this dimensional stability derivatives. If I pick m alpha, you could see it has c m alpha. What was c m alpha? c m alpha was d c m by d alpha and we have realized that c m alpha has to be negative for ensuring static stability of the airplane. And what is the dimension of c m alpha? It is a dimensionless, right. So, these are dimensionless parameters derivatives. Okay. However, what, ha what happens to m alpha? You could see it is no more dimensionless, it has a dimension. Okay. To be more precise, if you want to know the dimension, this will be you can check yourself of this dimension. So, what again you could see this m alpha, m alpha dot m q, m u all are dimensional stability derivatives. This was non dimensional stability derivatives because they attribute to stability. Okay. So, this should be very clear in your mind before we do some jugglery here and there. Our life needs some rest because so much of expressions we are deriving and we need to know what you are going to do with all this. The big question will come whether this approach is helping us or not.